Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Decipher Sports Super Bowl Super Show. I am one of your hosts, Neil Reynolds, and the man alongside me for the next 30 minutes needs no introduction, but I'll give him one anyway. Mr. Red Zone, Scott Hansen. Scott, how are you? Neil, great to see you, buddy. Welcome to Los Angeles. Oh. You know, the whole, the whole world will be coming to Los Angeles, at least virtually, for the Super Bowl, but we're pleased to welcome you and all the uh, NFL UK fans there virtually right now to Los Angeles. Fantastic. We are in Scott Hansen's kitchen, everybody. We are going to preview <laughs> Super Bowl 56, the Cincinnati Bengals and the Los Angeles Rams. We're going to uh, have some quick fire questions. I've renamed this Scott on the spot. Uh, uh, we're going to yeah. do our Decipher Awards as well, NFL Awards for the season. They've entrusted us with those, the good people at Decipher. And we're going to hear from some UK super fans. Uh, but Scott, let's start with the news, which to begin with, really, the news is this is the most incredible playoff series ever, isn't it? I mean, it's got to be up there. I know we, you and I get romantic about the NFL, but it's, <laughs> it's almost made me want to write a poem. <laughs> Hopefully we get a classic game on Super Bowl Sunday and that it, and that it would be worthy of a poem or, or a bard's tale, so to speak. <laughs> uh, you, you know, this season was so hard to figure out for all the fans that are watching on Decipher uh, that watch NFL Red Zone. We said week by week, we don't know who's great this year in the NFL. And just about everybody at the beginning of the season, oh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have all 22 starters back and the greatest quarterback of all time. Pencil them in for the Super Bowl and the NFC. And then the Chiefs had been to, to three straight uh, or were gunning for three straight. So why not the Kansas City Chiefs and the AFC? Oh, and the rest is just, you know, we'll figure it out in the wash. <clears throat> uh-uh. You know, there were, there were points during the season where both of those teams looked vulnerable. They proved to be vulnerable in the playoff series. And now we've got two four seeds playing for the Super Bowl championship. Never happened before. And, and uh, it, it's been a fascinating season. And hopefully we get a classic game to cap it off. Yeah, and two four seed to, you know, the Bengals at one point in mid-December, they were seven and six. Uh, in November, the Rams had lost three in a row. I mean, we just don't know, do we? We pretend we know. We, I'm we glad no, I'm glad you brought that up because what I always look at when we have the Super Bowl matchup and, and the bye week to really get into all of the minutiae and the details is what was the lowest point of the season for either team? And you just named it right there. There were there were points where Rams fans and Bengals fans respectively would have figured, eh, we're dead in the water. You know what? This is not our year. And Bengals fans probably would think, yeah, you know what? We we we're not ready yet. We're not ready to take that leap. We Joe Burrow looks great, yeah. and and Jamar Chase has proven to be a weapon as a rookie. But you know what? We're not quite there yet, especially when they were seven and six on like a two game losing right. streak. And then when the Rams had their losing streak as well, and the NFC West was an absolute clash every single week in that division. Rams fans would have figured, yeah, no chance for a home Super Bowl this year. Da, 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 da. And yet here we are because these are the two hottest teams going right now. In fact, the Bengals are really the hottest team in football, even more so than the Rams, because the Bengals have only lost one game since mid-December. And that's right. when they already had the division locked up. That was week 18 to the uh, Browns. Mm -hmm. and, and they had already had the game. But they already had the division locked up, didn't have anything to play for. Uh, so it, it, it's uh, it, it's very interesting at, a, at the end of a very interesting season, hopefully a very interesting game on Super Sunday. Absolutely. We're going to dig right into Super Bowl uh, 56 in a few minutes time. Other bits of news, though, of course, uh, Tom Brady, we bid farewell. Uh, 22 seasons, 10 Super Bowl appearances. He won seven of them. Could have won all 10 of them. <laughs> it was so incredible. I mean, I don't know what words are left, Scott, to describe this man. Yeah, OK. Greatest quarterback of all time, there is no discussion. Probably the greatest football player of all mm -hmm. time. In fact, in recent days, Bill Belichick came out and said, this is the greatest football player of all time. Not the greatest player I coached, not the greatest quarterback, but the greatest football player of all time. I would call him that. Some people might want to make a, a case for Jerry Rice or maybe Jim Brown or maybe even Lawrence Taylor in the more, uh, you know, more recent decades. But I think he's the greatest football player of all time. My thing is, is he the greatest team sports athlete of all time? Because then you're looking at Wayne Gretzky and Michael Jordan 
Some people might even try and make a case for LeBron James. And yep. then for all of the soccer fans, the, the European football fans out there, who would you place as the greatest soccer player of all time and then compare him to Tom Brady? I think that's an argument that can be made, but there's nothing more in the football world that anyone can can say about Tom Brady that, that uh, hasn't already been said. No, he's, he is in that bracket with Messi, with Pele. You know, if I'm going to give you the soccer names, Maradona, Ronaldo, uh, you could walk down any street in London. You might not have an NFL fan, but you'll ask them, do you know Tom Brady? Oh, yes, yeah. the guy who won all the Super Bowls. So he does transcend. Uh, he does transcend and he's done it all. And he goes out on top, Scott. He goes out kicking and screaming against the Los Angeles Rams, leads another comeback. You know, at the end of a season when he threw for more than 5,000 yards, 43 yeah. touchdowns. There was no fade. There was no fade. And he'll always be able to remember that. Now, that might drive him crazy a couple of years from now. He might wonder if he could have still done it. He leaves also in a season where he's 44 years old and he's going to get MVP votes. Mm -hmm. You and I, I think, are going to talk about the MVP here. But he is going to get some MVP votes in his final season at the age of 44. Almost impossible. There's so many different ways of looking at it. But one of the ways that I, I, I thought about it is this. He technically could have had two Hall of Fame careers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Take take the first 10 years of his of his career incredible. and just put the, the stats and the accomplishments and the winning. And that's most likely a Hall of Fame career. And then take the last or take 11 and 11, let's say, you know, right. take the last or even since he's been 40, he's been unbelievable and a mega winner i mean that, that's that's it, it 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 boggles the mind what he has done he's he's the greatest of all time uh which somewhat somewhat overshadows ben roethlisberger retiring 19 seasons never had a losing campaign won two super bowls uh so big ben farewell aaron Rodgers, uh new team in 2022 back with the packers or retiring i always felt like scott this depended very much on how the season finished and it didn't finish great for the Green Bay Packers. I just wonder if it's going to come up again as an off season story. What do you think? Uh, I, I, well, it's absolutely going to be an off season story. <laughs> I'll just add this about Ben Roethlisberger. You, you, you don't put the numbers next to Tom Brady or the winning next to Tom Brady, but Ben does have something over Tom Brady. And that is this. He played his entire career with one franchise mm -hmm. and he has, the, the city of Pittsburgh, which is one of our greatest sports cities in the United States, he is on the Mount Rushmore, if hopefully most people understand that reference too, yeah. of, of Pittsburgh sports athletes. And that is something that you don't take lightly in the great state of Pennsylvania. So Ben does have that at least over, if you will, Tom Brady, who of course played for two different franchises. As for Aaron Rodgers, I would say this. I agree with you in terms of it would depend his likelihood to come back to Green Bay would depend on how the season went. But I would say even more so behind the scenes and on the field. And apparently, according to Rogers, through some of his news conferences during the season, the there have been reparations made in some of the relationships with upper management and the executives that run the Green Bay Packers with whom he had smoke signal that he had an issue with mm -hmm. going into this season. So if that's true, I think there's more likelihood of a chance that he'll still take another snap for the Green Bay Packers. However, Devontae Adams' future is still up in the air going mm -hmm. into this offseason here. And so we'll see what they do with Devontae Adams. If there's no Devontae, I would think there's a very strong likelihood that Roger says, that's it, We're, I'm not a part of a rebuilding project. If we yeah. can come back here and win 13, 14, 15 games next year and get to the promised land, this is where I want to be. If it doesn't happen, send me to a place where the infrastructure is uh, already built for a, for a Super Bowl championship, if they can get a Hall of Fame quarterback, and I'll come and be that guy. But I, I really don't know how to handicap it right now. If you you ask me, is he back or not? He is a, He's his own man. He's Some people that. would even say he's a little bit strange in his decision process. 
but I, I don't think anyone knows, maybe including Aaron Rodgers right now, whether Rodgers will be back. Yeah, they are $45 million over the cap. He doesn't want to be a part of a rebuild, as you said. Um, one last thing, I think, as we head towards Super Bowl 56 and we look and kind of reflect, get in a reflective mood and think about this season. And um, we've got actually looking ahead to next season, Germany coming on the horizon. Yeah. I think it's going to be very exciting. We've got these teams now who can market themselves uh, in the UK. So Chicago, Jacksonville, Miami, Minnesota, the New York Jets, San Francisco. Good times ahead. And, and of course, we had the London games back. Yeah, and well, you got to tell me because I did not make it out for any of the London games. Of course, I watched them all on TV, and it was thrilling to see people back in the stands. How did how was the reception after the the one year uh, you know COVID hiatus? It was like a party. It was like the shackles had been removed. It was fantastic, and and the moment I'll remember, and I've just written about this in the Super Bowl game program. Uh, the moment I'll remember from this season was we were doing the game for Sky Sports and. I'm looking down from the studio and I've got the feed so I can see the players on the sideline and the fighter jets soar over the mm -hmm. um, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium at the end of the national anthem. And Matt Ryan just looks up and then nods and puts his helmet on and trots onto the field. And I was like, yes, the NFL is back. It's back. And we needed it so bad. Um, so it's great that we've got it. And I'm really hopeful Um you know, we see what's going to happen in Germany. It's going to be fantastic. The future's bright internationally. It really is. I have heard from German football fans, and they are just, they are over the moon to get the game in. You know, there's so many people that stay up late, and I'm always cognizant of that as I host NFL Red Zone, what type of a time commitment it is on a Sunday night for you, for other right. Uh, fans, anyone watching this right now, uh, anywhere in, in the UK or in Europe, to stay up late and watch it and for Germany to get game and then games, plural, you know, throughout the future years is absolutely going to be a thrill because I know they want to showcase their passion the way they've seen the UK do it for the, uh, for the handful of years we've had the international series. One of the things that I always love and that always impresses me when they televise the games over here. And it's the opposite. When we have an early kickoff at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium or Wembley, wherever they would be playing, like it'll be a, it can be a 6 a.m. kickoff over here or a 7 a.m. kickoff over here in Los Angeles. Yeah. Like 9 a.m. on the, on the, uh, uh, on the uh, East Coast of the United States. But when they pan the crowd, the number of different jerseys and paraphernalia, Wh whoever's playing in the game, yeah. right, is obviously represented, the two teams. But you'll see, if you really pay attention, you'll see 20 or 30 or all 32 NFL teams gear represented in the crowd. And, and that always, I always find that fascinating and, and really encouraging when you talk about the future of, of pro football as a, as a global sport. Mm.